Warning, safety is not guaranteed during Peter's presentation as there is a distinct chance whenever he's around that somebody may be found murdered. Oh. Am I able to speak now? I'm not getting your way. A few things before we begin. Unusual things may happen. If anyone wants to heckle me and or go to the bathroom or anything like that, we are prepared to deal with you in certain matters. So I advise you all to stay in your seats and not move out into the aisles during this presentation. In addition to that, whenever I say the word murder, if I could get a <gasps> from the audience. So if you could murder, it's very good. Now, if I say murder, that, that doesn't mean murder. Murder is, that's exactly it. I was exactly going to ask you for that. So very good. So, gentlemen, if we could begin. Now, with regards to all of my murder mysteries are known as a night of murder and mystery. And essentially, I host them mostly as dinner parties uh, for my friends. Part of the problem is, is that every time that I host one, more people are like, next time you do this, keep me in mind for it. But let me talk a little bit about the differences between murder mysteries. There's two different distinct types. There's one that's run on stage uh, for a theater audience in most instances, and then there's one that you run at home. Now, th there's a couple of distinct differences between the two. I'll get into that in a bit. But this was one I was in recently. This was a staged uh, murder mystery at the uh, Wilmington Drama League. It was a fundraiser for them. It was The Wedding from Hell, and essentially, that is the, uh, the cast. I was playing the cop in that one. Um, but the thing about it is, is that those live murder mysteries are scripted, they have a live audience, the cast run the game, and the audience are the ones that are trying to figure out what's going on. Now that's versus what I normally run. They're, they're great murder mysteries, but that's not exactly what I'm going to talk about tonight. And that wasn't the type of murder that I was talking about. <laughs> But let's talk about inspiration here for a second. Now, I'm generally inspired by 1930s and 1940s film noir. We're talking about Chinatown, we're talking about that sort of thing. Now, I'm gonna go into two different murder mysteries right here, Clue and House on Haunted Hill. Now, they're not 1930s, 1940s film noir, but they are ensemble casts that are trying to figure out a murder, and that's what you're looking for as far as inspiration for an event like this. Because again, you're trying to figure out who done it, and you're trying to have some complex characters. Now, there's a couple different genres, but the problem that you have with these genres is that you start to get the stigma of LARPing involved here. So the thing is, is that, again, with the Renaissance Fair and all that other sort of stuff, uh, people want the 1940s, 1930s, 30s noir more so than not. You want to cast people to their strengths and weaknesses in this sort of game. You're going to have to write an awful lot for these people, generally about a page or more for the characters, and you want them to have conflicting goals and or uh, objectives to achieve throughout the evening. Uh, you give them their, their page at the beginning of the night, and then generally what you want to make sure is everyone has something to hide. If you didn't take anything else down from this, is, is that everyone has a secret, and then they sort of start to try to mingle with each other and try to undermine each other. That's where you get the intrigue, the conflict. And that's what you see in all of the murder mysteries, like Clue or like House on Haunted Hill or anything like that. And generally, with this sort of game, you want people to be doing things. Like they're, with a murder, again, you want to search the bodies. You want to have to figure out what to do with the bodies. You want people trying to kill each other, essentially, because you want murder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But here's where murder mysteries go bad. I've had a couple instances. In House on Hunted Hill, they hand out a pistol to each of the characters. I thought about that one year. But as you can see, that year ended up like Reservoir Dogs, <laughs> is essentially it. You, you want to, again, sprinkle some weapons out, but you want mingling. You want intrigue. You want people talking to each other. You want happening events. Like, you want the lights to go out, people to say, what's going on? You want murder. Ah! Oh! oh my goodness. Jeez, what's, what's going on? Oh dear me, it appears that our host has been murdered. Well, uh, I believe it is, actually. Now, there's only one thing to do from here. What you want every murder mystery to end in is a parlor scene, and that's what we're coming to a close here at this very moment. Now, if you'll excuse me. The parlor scene is when the detective and or the good guy and or whomever goes over the suspect. So first we start with Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage was recently in Delaware, if you have been following the news journal. 
Uh, he's actually wanted for murder in Westeros. Known enmity with Rodney Jordan. Apparently, he said a short joke. <laughs> Next up is Ken Grant, Delaware social media mogul, debonair, debonair man about town. He's also wanted for murder in Westeros. Cur exactly. Currently wanted for questioning by the Ministry of Magic as well. Ken Grant, very suspicious. But then we also have another one of our hosts, Lori Romola. Now, Lori Morella is, in addition to organizing this event, notorious meticulous for attention to detail. Constantly cheery demeanor, too cheery in my opinion. Also, I've worked with Rodney before. I would want to kill him if I was helping to organize an event with him. But beyond that, I know who did it and I'm prepared to reveal who did. Out in the hallway is where Rodney came from. It looks like he's been it's struck down with a blow from the head. He's known for his prowess in social media. There's only one person that wants to take over social media in Delaware. That is clearly Ken Grant. And if you look behind his back right now, Ken appears to be hiding the wrench. So it was Ken Grant in the hallway with the wrench that killed Rodney Jordan. Thank you all for coming out this evening. Oh. He's alive! <laughs> I'm available for parties and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> <laughs>